Hello everyone and welcome back to Cause Streams TV. I am Cause and we're going to be taking a quick look at the next three bosses that were available for us in raid testing. Nexus Princess Caveza, Rashanon, and Brute Twister Ovanax. Before we get to that though, first of all, I want to say thank you everyone who took the time to check out my video. For a small channel like mine, it's always appreciated when people chop on. We ended up getting three new subscribers out of that, and the video itself got 1,600 views, 1.6K, and then my weekly video got 520. I went up from about 14 to 20 views for the week up to 1,600 and 520. So first of all, I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone who tuned in and took a quick look. I really appreciate you guys. That was huge for a small channel like mine. So once again, I just want to say thank you. I'm going to keep up, keep doing what I'm doing. Hopefully you guys come back and enjoy the videos. So first up, the first boss we're going to take a look at is Sikram, Captain of the Sakuri. Really cool model, really cool fight. So far, this is one of my preferred fights. I'm definitely enjoying it from a tank perspective. There is a lot going on. So when we first got into the boss, obviously we didn't really take some time to go over the fight or what it does or any of the mechanics. We just kind of went in and we pulled the boss. It was definitely tuned correctly compared to the boss we fought on Thursday that was accidentally opened by Blizzard. The fight has a lot. The mechanics that we saw are relatively the same. However, they were actually working as intended. For example, the portals that spawn actually had a significant pull to them. And I'm going to talk about how to actually handle these portals because there is a there's method to how to deal with them. The fight itself had a very good flow. Looking at other streamers that were able to get through this boss, the enraged looked to be at around six minutes. So it's a lot of mechanics in a very short time, but it definitely ver is very manageable. It was a lot of fun and really cool to experience. Yeah, dealing with those portals was definitely challenging, especially because of the first few ways we replaced them. We're just making lines around the room. We weren't actually coordinating or understanding what to do with them. The phase blades where the dash remain there, and that's actually what spawns the sp those portals. Let's do a quick breakdown of one of the better pulls and explain how this fight looks. Before pulling the boss, we actually took the time to mark each corner of the of the main platform in the middle of the room. Uh, when you pull the boss, we were taking the boss over to skull on pull. The reason is that when the marks come out the tank the active tank gets one of those marks and if you actually place the portals around the room like you're about to see here players get marked and each player is taking their portal out to a different corner that we've we've marked around the room and what happens is after the tank drop there there's everyone moves into mid and those portals the gravitational pull will keep you in the middle so as a caster you get moved around but you don't get pulled directly into one of those portals because the pull is fine right after you, you get the orbs that spawn out of you if you get hit by one of these orbs you get a debuff that's going to make you spawn another one right after those portals pop you get the phase blades that 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 charge through you want as if you have if you're targeted you want to take them out of the room if you get hit, you get a debuff, and the debuffs are the ones that'll spawn all the orbs. Now, right after that, you get the Wolverine Claws from where the dash is ended. So the further away from you they are, they're easier to dodge. And right here is when all of those orbs exploded. Because we all got hit by it, a lot of players had the debuffs, and then it drops those circles once again. And now there's a strong pull because all the portals are on the same side. So right after these phase blades here in the first phase, you want to spread out again, drop all the orbs, and then that way position those in a good spot so the portals are again spaced out enough that you can actually be pulled in safely and stand in the middle, right? You The, the idea is to spread the portals around the room to limit the gravitational pull so you can just stay in the middle. Once all that ends, you go into an intermission phase, which is really, really cool. It chops the room into certain into these blue pe blue chunks, and then people get these beams that go through them. Very similar to how, what Farak had with blazes. This is the same idea. You get one of the blaze-style mechanics, and you just stand still. But at the same time, you're dodging pizza slices on the floor. I thought this was a lot of fun. I think this is, this is the whole phase. Then get out of this, and it repeats itself. After each phase, though, you get an additional portal that you have to can manage, right? So you start with four portals at the start of, start of the pull, five portal, portals after intermission, and six portals after the next intermission after that. So there's a lot of managing of where the phase blades dash to, making sure the portals spawn in the right spot. This fight was a lot of fun. Really, really cool design, and it's really fast-paced, and it flows very, very well. I'm definitely impressed with how this fight went. As a tank, it was a lot of fun. You get to position, you get to move, you have to dodge. Really, really looking forward to this fight on live. It was a really good fight to beta test. We were tuned at 610, and Heroic Gear drops at 616, so not really that bad. I think this fight was definitely, like, it felt good. I was watching other streamers. They were able to get it to the end, but it just repeats, right? So, yeah, about a six minutes in range. Really, really, really cool fight. This was definitely the most fun one I've done since we started beta testing. The next boss we went up against was Rashanon. This boss is like a really cool giant spider bat thing. 
And it actually just hangs around on the edge of the platform, right? Uh, when you pull the boss, he will immediately do an AoE mechanic called Erosive Spray. Now, this pulses for a lot of damage. So it's probably best to stack at the start of the fight. The tanks cannot turn him. He is always facing the front because he snapped onto the edge of that platform. Uh, there's only a few mechanics to deal with. You've got spider webs that you drop. You want to run out of the raid. You've got the Erosive Spray that pulses AoE damage. And then you also have these cool uh, poison waves that come out. So two players get marked with a wave and basically you want to be inside of it. So you have to split up where the person who has the left and the right side the person who has left goes left the person who has right goes right so here's a bit of a later pull as you see we go in we pull the boss we all stack up we start doing lots of healing which makes it easier when you're stacked people get these big aoe circles that they want to run out to the side right on for the tanks you want to swap after every, every savage assault uh, it does a lot of damage as a blood decay you could probably take three five seven but because there's a phase in this where he flies away you will die just from the dot so you have to be mindful of that where you need a lot of spot healing so after those web goes out there's really not much happens minus the aoe pulsing right and then the tank swaps that need to occur like here's a great example um right so here's the beams that i was talking about one person goes left one person goes right and when that wave goes out it actually clears the room of all the poison on the ground right all the webs you drop that is how you clear them Right? And after a little bit of time of just repeating those mechanics, the boss will actually get up and fly away. So as a Blood DK, if you have three, three to five stacks of this, you may be able to survive. But chasing him over to the other room, you do want to get spot healed as it does a ton of damage and that takes down. And you can't heal yourself. So as you're running over there, you're basically just dodging AoE swirlies on the ground. The boss clips onto the platform on the other side. And there's a cool mechanic similar to what Senar did with the web pull. There's a big AoE circle. And the more people that stack in it, the less the pull affects you, right? So if there's not enough people, you will get yeeted off the room. And as you saw there, half of our raid just got pulled right off the platform. Me as a de blood, blood DK, I use Death's Advance, but there we go. There's the wave mechanic once again. You clear up all the stuff on the ground. But And that is the fight. And then it just repeats itself over and over again. That AoE pull mechanic is so cool because if you don't have enough people in it, you get yeeted off the room. And it was really cool to experience. The first time I saw it, I just started laughing out loud because I couldn't believe what I just saw. Thinking everyone. What the? <laughs> Maybe that's not a so. Having seen what I am assuming are the, is the only two phases of Ration On, it's the same few mechanics over and over. It doesn't look like it's a very challenging fight. There's the AoE webs you have to drop. There's the waves you use to clear the webs. There's the massive AoE damage that comes out. And then there's the tank buster and then the move across the room where you have to soak the circle. I don't think there's a lot of mechanics for this fight. But I don't think there need to be this fight may be tuned or it's just you have to be quick right and having to run your whole raid over there in time to actually get into the slam definitely seemed kind of interesting so I'm curious how this is going to play out on live it doesn't seem like a very challenging boss mechanically it does f seem fairly fun and for the tank buster if you're not watching the the stacks it will start hurting significantly overall pretty simple fight from a design perspective but I like it and the next boss we got to try out is Brood Twister Avanax. This is a Gahoon. This is the Gahoon looking like boss I talked about in my last video. Uh, he definitely was not a target dummy this time. There were multiple mechanics we had to deal with and multiple ads that were spawning. It felt very chaotic. It felt like there was a lot going on, a lot happening, and it was a little hard to kind of follow. I wasn't tanking this boss. I got an opportunity to play on Holy, uh, and it was kind of nice. It was a welcome change. I still remember how to play on Holy. I was able to do some decent numbers, uh, but it was a little more difficult to follow mechanically what was, what was happening because I was trying to dodge. Uh, so it looks like what happens, there is a phase where you get these unstable webs. You're supposed to get these dispelled. You can also use AMS as a Death Knight, and it will automatically dispel you, I noticed. Unless someone was just dispelling me at the exact same time I popped AMS. So I'm assuming AMS was working to get rid of that after I got the debuff. And then there's a lot of swirlies to dodge. And then add spawn. When the add spawn, if they attack you, it's kind of like the infest, infested maggots in Waycrest Manor. They will start, they will attach to you and multiply. So you want to run away from them. These little parasites, you want to run away from them. You don't want to let them touch you because they will multiply and do more and more damage. After the boss goes into the vessel type thing on the side of the room, he actually spawns a, a worm that needs to get nuked down in a big spider. And from what I could tell, the fight would just repeat itself. This fight definitely did a significant amount of damage. 
and it was really challenging to follow uh, as a DPS player. Um, I felt like there's a lot going on. Uh, as you see, there's just ads and ads and ads spawning, right? And because every time the ad gets to you, it starts multiplying, right? So that was a really big challenge because we would get overrun by the ad. So really interesting how some classes are going to deal with that. Uh, most likely a stack mechanic, keep everyone close. Stun, uh, trap, rop, you're going to want to get those away from, from the raid so they don't multiply and nuke them down as quickly as possible. But I do really, really like the size of the boss room, the size of the arena, the area to move. You have a lot of room to actually be able to kite the parasites to get rid of them. Uh, overall, I think this fight is going to be a chaotic fight because there's a lot of ads to deal with. So, so once the worm spawns out of the A, when it's covered by this black shadow stuff, that shadow continues to spread consistently. Meaning, eventually, melee can't get in there and hit the worm, so it really has to be ranged that deal with it. But yeah, I couldn't get in there and hit it, and here I'm waiting for a dispel. So really tough fight for melee at times. And as always, if something fixates you as melee and you have to run, it definitely makes it a little more challenging to deal with. So after seeing these three bosses, my favorite so far is Princess Caveza. There is so much happening in such a quick succession that it's a really fun fight to just play, no matter what role you're in. Uh, second to that, uh, it would most likely be Brood Twister. I think because that fight is so chaotic, once you figure out the dance and how to deal with some of the mechanics and be efficient with the ad control, I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And then we have Rashanon in third place for me anyway. Uh, the fight just didn't feel like it did much, uh, very low amount of mechanics so it wasn't overly challenging it was just a little fast pace and we had to learn the dance out of all five bosses my favorite two so far is definitely olgrax the first boss because of all the different mechanics how well they're telegraphed the giant size of the platform and that the tank gets to experience the fight and as i've already mentioned princess cavezia i absolutely love that fight and i love how it works Thank you to everyone once again who tuned in the last video and who's tuning in to this video. I really appreciate you guys and I'm grateful that you take the time to watch these videos. I don't really get into the boss mechanics, what happens or how to deal with them because there's so many good guides out there already. I don't think that's relevant. I'm just a casual, I'm just someone who plays the game casually and loves it. And I want to present some of these things in a more casual way to the player who just comes in, wants to see it quickly and understands what's happening. So let me know if that's, if that works for you. Let me know if you want me to get a little more detailed and hopefully you guys hit that like and subscribe button and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching and have a fantastic week. Peace out everyone.